This Shabbat is the last one of the year, and so it's the most difficult sermon to give for rabbis, because you don't want to do your best stuff three days before Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> so we're going to talk about something lighter, and that is the most sacred time of the week for rabbis and cantors. You might think it's right now when everybody's here in the sanctuary, but really it begins at about 12.30. It's called the Shabbat nap. <laughs> Actually, I was in the back talking to Benjamin Fingerhut, our musical director. I said, I'm going to talk about the Shabbat nap. He said, Rabbi, that's the story of my life. <laughs> and I really do mean it because the Shabbat nap serves two purposes. It, of course, is to have us rest from the week that was, but it's also for us to rejuvenate for the week that will be. And I'm thinking about the Shabbat nap because I know for the clergy, for our staff, and probably for most of you, simply we're tired. It's the last week of the year. Rabbis are tired from writing sermons. Rabbis are tired from preparing for services. But things keep going on. You know, people often say that rabbis have the most busy time and they're the most tired during the month of Tishrei that will begin on Rosh Hashanah. But really, it's the month of Elul, right now. Once we hit Wednesday night, if the cantor and the rabbis are not ready, then you have problems. Because we go on autopilot for the next month. The adrenaline of the community coming together the excitement of hearing the shofar, it brings an energy that you all know that doesn't do it justice from just live streaming, but we have to literally be in those seats. What's even better in the month of Tishrei are not just the beautiful services, but this week, because the holidays are during the week, not on the weekends like last year, the offices are closed for about eight days of the month. There is in fact time, not only for the Shabbat nap, but for many holiday naps as well. The month of Elul, we're not just preparing for the holidays, but schools have started, our religious school, Sinai Akiba. Membership season is in full drive. It's wedding season. It's been a mitzvah season. It's a race to the finish line. And this year, as we say over and over, it's been a year like no other. Every single week, we compose a sermon that we think will be relevant just a couple of days later, but the news that we read going into Shabbat completely turns it on its head and we're literally composing sermons almost on the spot to be relevant to our lives as Jews. Just think about the last Shabbat last year. You probably would have never have imagined there would have been a hundred seats empty in the back for hostages. We're tired. We all need a nap. But this morning, I don't want to just tell us that we need a nap. I want to distinguish between two types of tiredness, two types of exhaustion. There's the tiredness of being faint, and there's the tiredness of being weary. And I want us to recognize when we come here on Wednesday night or definitely on Thursday morning, when we do show up tired, I want to make sure that we are the right type of tired by the end of this sermon. Rabbi Yosef Soloveitchik, who was one of the greatest theological minds of the last century, he wrote an essay in 1966, remember that's just months before the Six-Day War, and it is called The Joy of Being Creative. It's based on the verse of Prophet Isaiah, in fact comes just a chapter before the Haftorah that Preston and Caitlin chanted so beautifully, and the Prophet Isaiah tells us this, I quote, he says, even the young people shall be faint and be weary, and the young people, they will utterly fall. But the next part of the verse, but those that wait for God shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Rabbi Soloveitchik distinguishes between these two words because in Hebrew, there are two different words for being tired. The first in modern Hebrew is ayef, but the second one is yagea. What is ayef? What does tired mean? To be tired or faint comes from failure, from wasting energy, from doing nothing. We like to call this, or our children like to call this, being bored. 
it always derives from a lack of creativity. It's ironic, right? By doing nothing, you can actually be tired. In fact, when the Torah describes Esav, the brothers Yaakov and Esav, when Esav comes back from the field, he is described as ayef, faint. Why? Because when he was out in the fields, the rabbis tell us that he was not productive at doing anything with no purpose in his life. But the other word is yagea. It also means tired, but translated in a completely different way. Because when we are weary, Rav Salavechik says, it's because we have worked hard in order to produce something not only for ourselves, but also for others. Yageya, to be weary in that type of tiredness is because we have been productive to our community, we have produced blessings, and we have enjoyed the fruits of that blessing. When we are tired, in the yageya sense, we are content with our lives. When we are creative, there is a purpose to our lives, Rabbi Soloveitchik says. This is when we study Torah. This is when we engage in the mitzvot of Eretz Yisrael and Kashrut, as Caitlin and Preston told us this morning. When one is faint, we are robbed from our spiritual life. But when we are weary, we are spiritually satisfied. So what does it mean to be weary? Think about the Israelites as they crossed the Red Sea into the promised land from slavery. It was an arduous journey. We read about it over and over throughout the year. We remember it in the Kiddush and all different times on Friday nights and holidays. But even though it was an arduous and tired, exhausted journey, the Israelites recognized the miracles that were happening in front of their faces. And so they are described as yagea. They are described as weary but hopeful. Now, don't get me wrong. Both of these types of exhaustion are physical, but only one of them has a spiritual dimension and looks at the world in a completely different mindset. Because when we are weary, it is because of our achievements. And when we are weary, nothing can stop the efforts to continue those achievements. Because we understand that the more we have achieved, the more we have to achieve in the year ahead. Remember I told you Rabbi Soloveitchik was written, writing in 1966, 18 years after the creation of the State of Israel. And he writes to his audience, he says, you have every right to be tired because with your hands and with your heart and with your soul, you have built that land. His generation tirelessly worked literally to create that promised land. And as we gather here together, just days before Rosh Hashanah, I want to give us all that same permission that Rabbi Soloveitchik gave his readers. We have permission this year to be tired. We are tired as Jews of fighting anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, defending our own people in our land and outside. We are as tired on September 28th as we were on October 8th. We have done all we can for our people and our land. But this week on Rosh Hashanah, here's the task. We cannot empty, enter this sanctuary as faint, but we must come here as weary, knowing not only what we will face, but also knowing what we achieved in this past year. Individually, have we been productive in our own workplace? Have we built our own personal relationships in our home, in our synagogues? Or are we that person on the WhatsApp group who writes all the complaints but then goes away? Rabbi Soloveitchik concludes his essay on the joy of being creative, that those that are weary with the accompaniment of emunah, of faith, those are the people in this world that have an advantage. Because even when their plans collapse and their hopes may even disappear, they do not allow the idea of faintness to overcome them. Instead, they get up, they try again, and they hope to be weary tomorrow. This morning in our Torah portion, we read of Moses' death, which will be imminent. And when you think about the end of Moses' life, he says, Lo uchal lavo. He tells the people, I just can't go on anymore. And the commentator Nachmanides tells us that when Moses tells the people, look, I'm 120 years old, what's he telling them? 
He's tired. You'll get no more benefit from me by continuing to be your leader. But also, he ends with chizkuvi imsu. He said, don't despair, but be strong. As Psalm 27 says at the end of it, take courage, hope in Adonai. Moses does not want to die. He wants to complete not only his journey into the promised land, but live forever. But he also comprehends that he has done all he can, not only for himself, but also for his people. He's tired, but he has fulfilled his purpose in life so that the people can go on beyond their days so that we can do what we need to do today. Moses is faint, but Moses was not weary. Moses is not faint, sorry, but Moses is weary. Moses was tired because he led his people from slavery to freedom, and ultimately, it's up to us to lead our people from freedom to redemption. In just a couple of days, even hours, we will be back here on Rosh Hashanah. We will hear many, many shofar blasts. We, just like Moses, are tired. But let's remember those words that Moses left the people with. Chizku ve'imsu. Be strong. Take courage and hope in Adonai. Let's arrive here on Wednesday morning knowing that we have weary souls, that we are tired and will not sleep in any rabbi sermon, but we will be inspired to keep being productive, to keep finding joy and creativity, to keep finding a purpose in our nation, a nation of hope, a nation of strength, and ultimately, a nation of shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shana tovah.